Today we're going to show you how to install a Works Connection Pro Launch Start device. Works Connection designed this device to be lightweight and easy to install and use, and it's a great addition for any racer looking to improve gate starts. We've got a 2014 Honda CRF450R in our shop today, but these steps will be the same for any of the other bikes that we offer the Pro Launch Start device for. Works Connection provides the specific parts and the exact template for your bike's fork and fork guard to make the installation quick and easy. So to begin the install, we're first going to start by removing the front wheel from the bike. If you need to, refer to your bike's service manual for the steps on how to do this. And once we have that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and remove this bike's right lower fork guard. On some bikes, you might have to wait until you remove the right fork from the bike before you do this. After that, we're going to move up and loosen both the pinch bolts on the upper and the lower triple clamps. After we've got those loosened up, that's going to allow us to remove the right fork from the bike. We'll go ahead and slide that out. And then we'll take the fork ring, and we've already removed the Allen bolt from this, and we're just going to slide this down onto the outer fork too. You might have to spread it a little bit to get it over the widest part, but We'll just get it down to the bottom, and then we can go ahead and reinstall the right fork onto the bike. Go ahead and get it positioned correctly, and then we're going to tighten down and torque the two pinch bolts in both the upper and the lower triple clamps. Again, refer to your service manual for the torque specs that are specific to your bike. After that, we're going to move down and just loosely install the Allen bolt into the fork ring. The next step is to decide which template and preload position you want to use. Since our rider is a shorter rider, we chose to use the 110mm template on this bike. This will just affect the height of where the device sits on the fork guard. So we have our chosen template neatly cut out and we're going to go ahead and attach it to the fork guard. After we've got that taped into place, we're going to take this applied aluminum drill guide and we'll line that up on the template and go ahead and tape that down as well. You'll want to make sure you tape this on all four sides of it. After that, we're going to take a 3 16 inch drill bit and we'll drill the two 3 16 holes through the drill guide and through the fork guard. After that, we're going to temporarily install the two Phillips head trigger screws and those are going to help hold that drill guide in place while we drill the other two holes. So next, we'll take the supplied 3 quarter inch countersink bit and we'll go ahead and drill that center hole once you get all the way through the fork guard, I'm going to switch to a 5 16 drill bit and drill the other hole. Now that we're done drilling, we can go ahead and remove the drill guide and the template from the fork guard. And then we're going to take a razor blade and clean up any burrs that are left behind from drilling. The next step is to use the countersink bit to bevel the two trigger mounting holes. And they want you to do this by hand because it's easy to take away too much material or make a bigger hole by using a drill. So we're just gonna go far enough to where the backing washers will sit flush with the back of the fork guard once they're installed. Now we're ready to move to the bottom of the fork guard and install the two fork guard supports. So we're gonna use one of the fork guard mounting bolts to line that support up. And we're also gonna tape it into place. Next, we'll use a quarter inch drill bit to drill through that hole in the support and then through the fork guard. Repeat those steps for the other support and then we can use the provided hardware to secure them into place. We'll insert each bolt from the back side of the fork guard and then through the support bracket and a lock washer and nut will thread onto the outside. We found that it's easiest to slide a stock mounting bolt into the lower hole while you tighten down the support hardware. So after we have both the lower fork guard supports installed, we're ready to move up and install the trigger mechanism. Go ahead and position that on the outside of the fork guard and line it up with the mounting holes. After that, we need to apply some medium strength thread locker to the threads on each of the mounting screws before installing them. If these screws backed out while riding, it could potentially cause damage to your forks. So we'll go ahead and thread both of those screws in and then we'll tighten them down. and. Once we have those bolts tight, we can check to make sure the trigger is functioning like it should. And then we can go ahead and reinstall this fork guard back onto the bike. 
Once we've got those bolts in and tightened down, we can install the front tire back onto the bike. And we're going to torque all that hardware back to the factory torque specs. And then the last step this install is to line up the trigger and the fork ring. There's a few different ways to do this and one of them is to just tie the bike down in the back of a truck or trailer and compress the forks to allow you to line these parts up. For this bike, we're just gonna lightly snug down the pinch pull on the fork ring so we can make small adjustments, but it won't rotate freely on the fork. After that, we're gonna use a screwdriver to visually line these parts up. And then once we've got everything perfectly lined up, we can torque the fork ring pinch bolt down to six foot pounds. Now just go ahead and test out the start device to make sure it's working correctly. And now you're ready to ride. RockyMountainATVMC.com is the leader for your dirt bike parts, apparel, and accessories. Thanks for watching.